Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're going to have some fun today. And if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. And before we get started with the lesson, just a couple of things I'd like to say. One, congratulations to all of you, my subscribers. We recently hit 30,000 subscribers on this channel. And I have to congratulate you because over the years, I've simply done what you've suggested. And as I say often, I think this channel caters to an audience that may not have other artistic resources. And I like to focus a lot on beginner lessons as well. So we're going to keep that energy up and keep moving forward in Monet Cafe. And once again, congratulations. Next, I'd like to say that, you know, because I have the opportunity to be in front of the camera sometimes, and many of you know that I am not shy about sharing my faith. And goodness knows, I think in this world today, we need messages of hope and love. And that's part of what art's about too, you know? It's the beauty of art. And so I have been looking for quite some time for a company I might could collaborate with um, so that I could maybe wear some things that shared a message of hope and love. And so I recently found a company, contacted the owner, and I would like to share with you a little bit about what I'm wearing here and how you can support that company as well. The name of the company that shares these wonderful t-shirts, good quality too, is called Love in Faith. And I'd like to share what this shirt says. I love Philippians, the whole book of Philippians, but Philippians 4.8, and shame on me for not having it memorized. I have Philippians 4.13 memorized. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but this one says, finally, <clears throat> well, it doesn't have the finally. Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, I don't know if this is the same version as this NIV version here, but isn't that a message of hope and love? And so, fortunately, the owner has agreed to give a 20% off discount by using the coupon code SUSAN, with a capital S, 20. And there'll be a clickable link in the About section of the video here. But I did want to say that <clears throat> I was impressed with the quality of this shirt. It's nice and soft, and the size is perfect. I like a medium. I don't like things too tight, and so this is really nice. It's a little longer for me, but I just scrunched it up right here. So thank you, Jenna, with this company. I hope to be wearing more of these shirts in the future to continue sharing messages of hope to this world and my artistic viewers. And now I am going to be sharing an art video tutorial. Many of you may remember I did a video, a few videos back where I created my own recipe for making our own pastel surface. I know pastel papers can get expensive. If you know much about pastel painting, many artists prefer a little bit of a sanded surface. You get more layering with pastels. And so quite often I had used the product of clear gesso. And this is probably the least expensive way to make your own pastel surface. And it works great. And clear gesso uh, has a couple of benefits to it. One is it's clear. So if you do an underpainting on a piece of watercolor paper, mat board, whatever, you can put the gesso on top of it and it'll show through what you did. The other advantage is it has a little bit of grit to it, like sand. And that creates a little bit of a sanded surface to apply pastel on top of. And I get mine on Amazon, I believe, because I don't think Dick Blick has these big bottles. But anyway, so Clear Gesso is a great product and it works awesome. But I recently, like I said, made a new recipe. I was painting on these wood slices from Arteza. By the way, I've got some more coming that's really exciting. I can't wait to do these paintings. But I came up with a, a better recipe, I think, by adding a product called Marble Dust. Let me grab that. All right, this is Marble Dust and it's pretty inexpensive. I did get this one on Dick Blick. A four pound bag for, I think it's less than $10. And a little goes a long way. It has the consistency of baby powder. And I saw a recipe or a tutorial on YouTube where a gentleman artist made his own recipe and it didn't work for me as well. So I came up with my own measurements. And that is, let me show you here. I use, this is just a little um, sample container that I have in here. I did my experiment in. I mixed up two parts of clear gesso, 
to one part of marble dust. I think I had, I don't know, um, a half a cup of clear gesso and a quarter cup of marble dust. And what I found about this is the marble dust, this is the best that way that I can describe it that I think is what's happening. The marble dust gives a bit more consistency to the surface than just the clear gesso alone. And I found it made wonderful surfaces. So uh, one of the questions was, can you use this on something besides wood? Because that's what the video was. And so this video here, you're going to see me creating four different boards. These, this is just mat board where I have applied, first I applied an underpainting. Now, this is the simplest kind of underpainting, which is just to give it a color. I don't like working on white often. So I, I'm gonna show you three different products that I use, four different products that I use to create a colored board, and then I apply the recipe of clear gesso and marble dust to it, and it does make a, a nice surface. Now, the marble dust g does give it a little bit more of a cloudiness than the clear gesso alone. So if that's a concern, just use clear gesso. But anyway, I'm going to show you now how I made these boards with different underpaintings and also this painting. So you're going to get a whole lot in this video. All right, here we go. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yay! I've already shared the basic, very simple recipe, which again is one part of the marble dust and two parts of this clear gesso. So as you can see, I already put in a quarter cup of marble dust and now a half a cup um, or two quarters of the clear gesso. I mixed it up real good and I also found that when I kept it in the little container, I just used an old like container from some feta cheese, <laughs> that um, I could shake it up real well uh, before I use it or reuse it again and it seems to stay fairly well mixed. It doesn't separate too much, in other words. I was explaining here how before I had added some acrylic ink right to the mixture and it just lightened it up too much. So I'm gonna show you a different way to tone your boards. All right, now if you are using matte board, uh, it has uh, two different textures on each side. I'm choosing, sometimes I, I like the more textured one and sometimes I like the smooth one, but since I'm applying this pastel surface um, concoction to it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on the smooth side. So let's do this first board. Like I said, I have four of them in eight by 10 uh, boards and I'm gonna show you, go ahead and show you uh, this one product that I used I guess I'm getting low on it, but I actually have a bigger bottle of this. The Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Uh, I, I call this technique, along with this product, the Rita Kirkman technique. If you haven't seen the artwork of Rita Kirkman, she, oh, I just love her work. Man, she's good. And she, to my knowledge, invented the technique where she uses this with, no, that's not what we're doing today, fine pumice gel combined. I have the recipe up here. I have a video on how to do this. Um, I'll see if I can put these uh, videos that I've done in the past in the description section of this video so you can find them. But she can, she mixes these two together, kind of like I did the marble dust and the uh, clear gesso, and she applies it to board. And then she uses this product to do like a value study with whatever her subject matter is. And oh, her results just, it, her paintings just glow from underneath. So that's one of the reasons I like this color. So all I'm doing is I'm going to apply this Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold alone to this board before we put our homemade pastel do-it-yourself recipe on here. All right, so how's the best way for me to do this? If I just put this on the board and try to spread it, it's gonna be crazy. Um, I'm, I'm experimenting again. I don't know if I've done it this way before. I'm going to spray this board. This is not Victoria's Secret uh, Passionate Kisses. <laughs> this is an old bottle. It's actually got some alcohol in it. I can't remember if I mixed it with uh, water. It might just be, yeah, I think I did. Maybe a little water and a little alcohol. Then I've got another bottle that's got just water. So I'm going to spray this a little bit with this so that this will spread uh, more easily. So let me do that real quick. Some of you, I know, if you don't like the smell of alcohol, I use it just because it dries faster. Um, you can use water, but um, all right. So now I think I'll, let me put it 
in this little dish here instead of just on the board. So putting some in the dish, I might need a little more and I better hurry because that alcohol is going to dry fast and let's go for it. Now this is um, pretty concentrated in its color. So that's why I put it on the board first. Uh, or I mean the alcohol on the board first. See, it's drying already um, because it will be too thick. And it's okay if it doesn't go on super smooth. See, if you apply more water, it'll go on more like this because um, if you're doing a painting over it, sometimes the variations just make it look more painterly, you know? So here's our awesome, gorgeous golden color. And I'm using a brush that's purposely not real smooth. It's got a lot of texture to it. And I think it's kind of neat when it comes out with some kind of weirdness to it like that. So there's my first board. But if you want more consistency, um, you could apply a smoother coat of water. You could apply it more consistently. You even could dilute this a little bit with water if you wanted to. So, all right, so there's our, our first board before we apply it. I think that's kind of neat. Doesn't it have an old world look to it? No. All right, time for board number two. Once again, I'm gonna use the smooth side. This time, I'm going to apply Pastel. You know, we don't always have to find some other kind of product to tone our, our surfaces. We can use good old pastel that we're using anyway to cover it up with. So this is a new pastel by Prismacolor. And uh, this is just kind of a bright orangey pink. And I really like this color. And especially warmer colors do better for under painting colors for landscapes because it's more of a complement to the greens and blues that might be in a landscape. With this one, I wasn't real happy with the final result because the colors weren't vibrant enough. I basically, I do this technique all the time with pastels too on watercolor paper. And I think I might've failed to mention, you can use watercolor paper for the same thing that I'm doing here. So I used a chamois cloth to blend it. Again, I do this technique a lot, but it just still didn't have the vibrancy and it wasn't real consistent. So you'll see later, I actually, retone this paper with something else. All right, now it is time for board number three. And for this one, I haven't done this in a while, but I actually have a video on um, making your own boards using acrylic paint. Uh, and by the way, I have another video on eight ways to make your own pastel surface. And I have, like I said, another video on using these products, what I call the Rita Kirkman technique. Um, just tons of ways for you guys to save money making your own pastel surfaces because I know pastel papers get expensive. And sometimes some of you live in areas, I love that Monet Cafe is all over the world, live in areas where you may be limited in what you can get. So this time I'm gonna do the smooth side. Am I? Yeah, and then I'll do the rough side again. I'm speeding this one up a bit, but basically I'm using acrylic paint. And I really like to use acrylic paints that are a bit more translucent. And these golden tubes are neat because they give you a little swatch across these three black lines. And if you can see through it, like this particular color, green gold, it is very translucent. And I feel they work better. That one is kind of too. I feel they work better for underpaintings or when you're toning a board like this because you still keep the vibrancy of the paper showing through. It still stays very light and vibrant. All right, so what I'm doing, that one got kind of um, uh, stuck shut. You want to make sure, <laughs> I don't always do this, I need to though, clean the edges of your acrylic tube uh, the top of it really good before you put the cap back on because it can kind of dry shut. So I got some in a little dish. I'm adding some water based on my previous two techniques. I wanted to make sure I got it really um, where it would apply very easily. And it did. I really I liked this technique a lot. It's I used my, my brush again. That's just my crazy textured brush on purpose. I love this brush and I I like the texture, but if you don't like the texture, you can use a foam roller or a foam brush um, or just a brush that isn't so crazy like my brush right here. But isn't that a gorgeous color? Um, also too, if you wanted, like I just showed, you could take a paper towel and kind of wipe it smooth. But, uh, but I'm gonna leave it textured and this gorgeous green. 
For this board, I'm going to be using acrylic inks. These are Daler Rowney acrylic inks. I love these. I love their vibrancy. I also love how if you're using these on pastel papers and you don't want to take up a lot of the tooth, these don't take up any tooth of the paper. In this case, it doesn't matter as much because we're putting our own pastel surface on top of the board. But that particular color is called dark green, even though it's very like um, turquoise, a little more blue green to me, but I wanted the board to be more turquoise. So I used this one color called turquoise. So I added this color to the uh, dark green to get a little bit of a brighter color. Isn't that pretty? I think just the creation process of all this is so fun. So same old, same old, I'm still using my really heavily textured brush and uh, this is the one, by the way, this surface is the one that I will be using to create the painting that you will see. And this is the board that I mentioned wanting more vibrancy. So I decided to use the acrylic inks once again. This time I'm using a combination of these two that I love this combo. It is fluorescent pink and Indian yellow. They actually kind of give me a color similar to the Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold, uh, but perhaps a little bit more pizzazz to them, and probably because of that fluorescent pink. But anyway, I love this color combo of these acrylic inks. I did add a little water to this one, and I felt it worked better. So you guys are all learning from my trial and error. <laughs> so uh, I, I, everything just seemed to apply better with a little bit of water. Now, my brush handle came off. So uh, in this one, I am getting more of a smooth application rather than my my, my bristly brush and I actually kind of even liked a little bit of that pink new pastel that I had underneath it so once again very similar to the uh, quinacridone nickel azo gold so if you don't have the that uh, golden type of fluid acrylic uh, then you can use acrylic inks if you have those I'm giving you guys an excuse to buy too many new products right <laughs> and finally we are going to be adding the homemade pastel surface recipe of the clear gesso and the marble dust and I used two different types of applications for one I used the brush and then I used the foam brush as well so for this first one I'm just going to use a regular brush and I'm only going to do one coat I find that's all we need I went ahead and just took the handle off since it was falling off anyway so just one coat and I think I may have mentioned before that because the marble dust has been added uh, it doesn't stay this cloudy, but it is a bit more cloudy, a bit more opaque than just clear gesso alone. But you'll see once the boards dry, uh, you still can quite easily see the uh, underpainting color underneath. And here they are, four homemade boards with different colors. And I love creating these ahead of time so that when I'm in the mood to paint, I can just go grab something. And often I get this question all the time is, why do you do an underpainting? And sometimes it's just for the sheer creativity of it, but often I find it sets a mood and it inspires me maybe to paint scenery or things differently than I normally would. But for this painting, I'm going to use the turquoise one. I felt the turquoise board suited the subject matter quite well. I'm using a photo from Judith Williams. She's in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. And it's such a great resource because we have a reference album where our members, over 10,000 members, I think almost 11,000 now, can submit their photographs for other artists in the group to use. So I think it's great that often for people like me who don't get to go places a lot now, especially with COVID-19, we can find places far and wide all over the world and reference material for, from our very own group members. It's cool. I will be speeding up the painting demonstration portion of this video because the video was already so long with so much content. And I am going to add some music later for your listening pleasure. But I am going to talk to you guys a little bit and share with you a little bit about my reasoning for some of my choices. And also, too, if you're a patron of mine from my Patreon page www.patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins, I believe I'm going to take the painting portion and slow it down for you guys and put it on my Patreon page. And if you're not a patron of mine, it is real easy to do. It's only $5 a month. I do give extra instruction. We have a lot of fun. We have a weekly schedule. There's homework. There's story time. There is PE lesson, my patron education lesson, and my patrons have their own special album to share their work in, So, and as well as a Facebook group. So there's a lot going on there, but a lot of people support 
my Patreon page just to be able to keep Monet Cafe going here on YouTube. You guys, if you've been a subscriber long, you know I pour my heart and soul into this, and uh, I think it's a passion of mine because I had a struggle in life learning art and finding time to learn art and all the resources. There's so much more available now than when I got started. So, you know, I'm not the only one doing this. There's plenty of artists on YouTube giving some free art instruction. But again, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, it really does help, especially in these times. And uh, I do appreciate it. So patrons, I probably will be giving you a, um, a more detailed version of this. But I did want to share a little bit with you guys here in Monet Cafe about this. I was intrigued by the photograph. I'm going to talk about the pastels too. I was intrigued by the photograph. Uh, it had such an interesting lighting and mood. And I found out that, again, the uh, credit goes to Judith Williams, one of our group members in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. And the photo was actually from New Mexico. And I kind of felt that. I, um, I could see in the distance that there were... Uh, w there was some warmth to the mountains and it looked kind of deserty, but I think it seemed to be one of those interesting times of day when you literally have the sun setting and the moon rising at the same time. And it was like the foreground was very blue and the background because of the sun probably behind the person doing, uh, taking the picture. Uh, was still that mountain in the back was catching some of the sunlight. So it was very intriguing to me to have the the cool and the warmth in the same photo and that moon rising. Now also too, uh, I think I do want to do another video. I'll probably probably talk about this more uh, in the Patreon version of this demo that I do. Uh, talk a little bit more about photos and sometimes what to leave in and what to leave out. In this particular photo, there was a lot of debris and things. I couldn't even determine what it was. I had it pretty small um, when I was looking at it. But uh, there were some unnecessary things that, you know, as artists, we can use our artistic license and just leave in the things we think are important and leave out the things that aren't. So uh, so that's that was kind of uh, some of my thinking with this. And I really was happy with the surface. It did do well. I, I used, again, I've been using my little chamois cloth method. I know in the past I've used uh, different methods to blend things. I don't like to over blend, but sometimes on initial layers, blending is a good idea. And I used my little chamois cloth and it works great on this surface. I've shared in some past videos, it doesn't work great on UART paper. It's just a bit too sanded, but for this homemade surface, it worked great. And let me talk a little bit real quickly, and then I'll play some music for you guys about the pastels that I'm using. I will, at the very end of this video, show you. You see how I'm marking them all as I'm painting? This is kind of my new strategy. Thanks to you guys for giving me those suggestions. I've been asking you what you like to see, and your comments help me so much. So I really appreciate, appreciate your feedback. I do try to cater to that. So I've been marking my pastels as I use them, and at the very end, I do a cleaner version. I mark them all, and I give a little code. I'll tell you what that is at the end of the video, the TL, the S, um, the uh, JR, I'll tell you what those are. But anyway, I used a lot of the, you can see them right there, the Terry Ludwig umber shadows and shades look at those colors aren't they gorgeous i just thought they had kind of that new mexico feel you know the especially the, the warmer tones and there even were some of those purples and grays that i use there now with these sets often i like to keep a set intact if i if i pulled them all over the ones i was using to the left side i'd have to go back and put them all back in and i'm that's probably my pet peeve about pastels. I really don't like putting them away and reorganizing them because I just want to paint. <laughs> so my strategy with a set is I usually turn them straight up vertical like you see, and then I know the ones that I've already used. So, um, so I love this set, and real quickly, let me just brag on the Terry Ludwig Company. I have never met either Joff, I don't know if it's Jeff or Joff, um, the way he spells his name, Ludwig, and Terry Ludwig. But I have gotten to kind of know them somewhat from social media. And I'll tell you what, that is an awesome company. And I feel they have some really great values as well. So I like to support them, not only because their pastels are awesome, but they're just awesome. The company's awesome. All right, so enjoy some music. I will show all the pastels at the end. And uh, patrons, 
I will try to get the slower version with some more instruction uh, pretty soon. Oh, and by the way, this painting, the completed painting, is available in my Etsy shop now, and I always have a clickable link to my Etsy shop and all of my other links in the About section of my videos. I felt the perfect song for this painting tutorial was one of my favorite songs by Beethoven, Moonlight Sonata. for a little bit longer on this but I thought I'd just go ahead and show you the final. Once again I was very happy with using this homemade surface and I'm excited to be doing more paintings on the other boards. I thought I'd zoom in closely so you could see the surface and the pastels. All right now here is where I am very quickly marking all of the pastels that I used and I'll also provide a still image for you to look at but basically I've got Terry Ludwig's Unison, Sennelier, Rembrandt, Jack Richardson and here is the still image so you can see it more closely. You can pause this at any time if you'd like to see the colors or the brands more closely. All right guys I hope you liked that. Please like this video if you did. Comment, become a patron and as always happy painting.